Welcome to My Off-Grid Adventures. I'm Frank and I'm glad you're here with me today. Today I'm going to talk about the new Starlink Gen 3 that I installed in our off-grid RV. And this is replacing a Gen 2 that I had used for about a year. Was really happy with it, but with any promise of speed, I wanted to upgrade and it also claimed to have better reception and things like that. I am really remote here in our 60 acre off-grid property. So every little edge I can get is good. I work remotely from here. I do have a full-time job. I don't YouTube for a living or anything. I just like to share our experiences and adventures with you, but um, I need high-speed internet for my job. So it is an important thing for me and I am happy with it. But if you want to see the specifics of how it's different, I will share that in the video. One of the most obvious differences is that this doesn't have any motors to turn itself. You have to manually adjust it to point it in the right direction, but it's not that hard. And one less motor is one less thing to fail, right? Another difference is it's a little bit bigger. It doesn't use the same cables or pole mount from the Gen 2, so there's not really anything to repurpose. You can hold on to your old Gen 2 router and make it a mesh system, but I don't have anywhere else really to extend that or to power the other router. So I'm not using it that way. There is a difference in speed. The one that I'm mainly concerned about is upload speed since I do upload videos and I'm also on video conference calls quite often. So I do need the upload speed to be good and that is substantially better. We'll see that as we run the test. About eight months ago, I posted a video about my Gen 2 Starlink system. So let's look back at that footage and then we'll do some new tests and compare the two. At first I was really hoping I could repurpose that pole that I was using for the Gen 2 system, but no luck. Again, this is just footage from my previous video, so don't be too concerned that my mouth isn't moving to the words. That's the old recording, but I just wanted to show you what the speed test was on Safari first. And as you can see, it was a download speed of 29.3 and an upload of 2.27. On the second test, I used Google instead of Safari. Let's see what the difference is. And it's crazy different. I don't understand why it goes so drastically different sometimes. 234.3 with a 3.3 upload. And it never really went much above that 3.3 upload in these tests though. Okay, that's it for the old recording. Now we're doing a fresh new test. The first time using speed test within the Safari browser, just like we did with the first test of the Gen 2. And we're getting an impressive 173.5 download. And 9.84 upload. That's triple the upload speed of the Gen 2. And that was at the highest that I ever had the Gen 2, which is 3.3. Now we're testing this through the Chrome browser. We have 236.1 download speed and an even more impressive upload of 14.1, which is almost five times as fast as the Gen 2 tested at its best. Let's also test this on my iPhone. I have an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the first test we're going to do through the Starlink app itself. And then we'll do one within the Chrome app on the iPhone. The Starlink app says it has a 117 download. And they claim a 26 millisecond latency with a 15.3 upload. And I just run this one more time. This time it's showing bigger numbers. 203 download. And this time it's showing 20, 23 upload, which is getting close to nine times as fast as the Gen 2. This time still on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we're going to use Google Chrome's app with the speed test website and it shows 107.5 download with an upload speed of 7.84. Let's just do that one more time, still on the Chrome browser of the iPhone 15 Pro Max using the speed test site. 
This time it's going to show a download of 117.8 with an upload of 10.7. Very impressive. Ready to do some math? Let's crunch some numbers here. I'm giving you all of the numbers in case you want to check my math yourself, but the top table shows you both of the tests that were done for the Gen 2, and the bottom shows all of the tests done for the Gen 3. It's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison since I didn't test the Gen 2 on the mobile device, but still, I think we have some good numbers to work with here. It's a little easier to just look at the comparison of the averages. So for the Gen 2, it averaged 131.8 download with a 2.8 upload and a 34 latency. The Gen 3 was improved in all three areas, a 159.2 download, a 13.5 upload, and a 27.8 latency. I kind of find it funny right there that I accidentally and ironically had a gap in my speech between saying the number 8 and the word latency, which is really what latency is about. This is really where we get to see the difference. So just looking at the Gen 3, which is the winner in all three categories, the average download was 20.8% improved over the Gen 2. The average upload, though, was 382% improved, which is almost five times as fast, and that's where I needed the speed the most. And the latency was an improvement of 18.2%. So all across the board, the Gen 3 is a winner. Up to you whether you think that there's enough of a difference here to upgrade if you're currently using the Gen 2. I hope this analysis is helpful because in this test, it was used from the exact same location. So we're not testing it at two different places. So I think it's a fairly accurate analysis. We have a lot of videos on this channel about living off-grid in Michigan, whether it's about living in an RV off-grid or using solar power or tractors on our homestead. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. Well, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.